pretty good choice. Not a lot of Katakis out there. Zero. Not I, a lot of I didn't hate see all. anything that killed artifacts all day, really. Actually, I don't think I had a single one disenchant. <laughs> Playing wow. against uh, uh, to actually kill my artifacts. All right, well, uh, looks like our match is starting. It's been yeah. great talking with you, Mike. We'll see you in top eight. Good luck. Thank Congratulations, you. Congratulations on making two days Thank in a row. Thank you so much. Uh, you could be the future of. Uh, I hope we had a cr crazy match for us, so I hope he gets in. Uh, all right, Mike wishes a little uh, luck to Gerard here before I leave. So, Gerard's one loss was actually to Mike. Wow. So, uh, all right. Yeah, and then he got pared down, no less. Yeah, Gerard got pared down to play against Mike, and uh, Mike took him out. So for those of you just joining us, this is uh, round nine of the Star City Games Open Series here in Edison, New Jersey, uh, legacy portion, and this is it. After this, we'll be cut into the top eight. So these players are both playing for top eight. On the right of your screen, we'll see Mark Taco. Uh, Mark Taco is playing, or Toko potentially, I'm sorry if I'm uh, messing that name up. Uh, he's playing a Storm Combo deck. Uh, this is very similar to the deck we saw earlier uh, in, the, in the tournament. It's got Ad Nauseam, Lion's Eye Diamond, Lotus Petal, Brainstorm, uh, Thoughtseize, a main deck, which I suppose is maybe a slight different from what some people might do. Uh, but I think, you know, Duress and Thoughtseize main deck are kind of normal. Uh, the kid we saw playing earlier had Silence in yeah. his deck. But uh, for the most part, this seems to be a pretty, uh, pretty standard-ish kind of list. You have an idea of what's going on, at least, uh, as far as the main deck goes. The sideboard has some interesting choices. We'll get to those in a moment. Uh, on the other side of the table, on your left side, Gerard Fabiano. G Fabs himself. Already had one feature match today. Yeah. Uh, played a really uh, interesting white, blue, black Cobblade deck yesterday. Uh, missed yeah. top eight despite a lot of uh, pros thought that was like the format breaking deck for yesterday. Yeah, like, and uh, he still managed to pull it out. Yeah, Jerry Thompson told us today that he felt like Gerard had the best deck, uh, better than the red deck he was playing, the the red uh, Cobblade deck. So, I mean, Gerard's obviously already made waves in this tournament, but this time he can make waves in the form of a top eight. With his uh, yeah, and the thing about Gerard is Gerard's playing hymns, and uh, <laughs> that's not something you want to be on the other end. Right, of. that is something Gerard does well. He's playing Team America, full of Gerard is the master of the hymn Tarak. Tombstalker, Tarmogoyf, Hymn to Turak, Brainstorm, Jace the Mind Sculptor, Engineered Explosives, Sylvan Library, Days, Force of Will, Go for the Throat, Stifle, and Ponder all comprise Gerard's main deck. And uh, it looks like Gerard has a turn two Tarmogoyf off of two dual lands. This is uh, Mark's Islands. Now, how do we feel uh, Gerard's matchup here is against the Storm deck? Him seems like an awesome card in this matchup. Oh, yeah. Him could just be backbreaking. Absolutely. You cast a well timed him, and uh, that could be it. Especially if Mark Taco mulligans at all. Ooh, it's so scary to mulligan against the deck that's packing the hymns. Absolutely. Uh, in the meantime, of course, Mark is, I'm sure, is aware of what he's up against as well. I'm sure he'll be hiding cards with preordained and ponders, trying to sequence things uh, correctly. Uh, so Thatsu's here reveals him to Turak, uh, Brainstorm, Ponder, and Explosives. I feel like Mark yeah. will probably likely pick the him. Yeah, I think the him is uh, almost certainly what Mark's taking here. And looking at Mark's hand, it looks like Cabal Ritual, uh, maybe a Chromox, a couple lands. Mark uh, deliberating which card to pick here. It's interesting because every Storm deck, there are so many cards that you like have to play with. You know, you yeah. have to play with your filtering cards. You have to play with Brainstorm, Lotus Petal, you know, Lion's Eye Diamonds, like Infernal Tutor. These are all crucial cards. But what you fill the last couple slots with are what made, made the difference. And uh, Mark decided to play three Thoughts. He has four Duress here. And yep. uh, unlike some players who have played less, he has a full four preordains uh, to. He hasn't cut the uh, the ill-gotten gains combo for right. main at all. Still ill-gotten gains. Uh, Mark preordains into two dresses there, and it looks like he puts them both on the bottom of the library. Or no, maybe he put one back on top and one on the bottom. And Gerard draws. Looks like another Tarmogoyf. And here comes Brainstorm for Gerard. Dropping uh, instant into the graveyard. Drew a stifle. Oh my, Gerard with his main deck stifles could uh, actually be okay against this uh, storm deck. Yeah, they might do some damage. Like, uh, usually. You tendrils, me? Go ahead. Yeah, usually when you're going off with uh, tendrils, maybe you know you can play around it. Especially with ad nauseum, you can get a, a lot of storm built up and maybe. Yeah, I mean, it, it's hard to do that though when Gerard's going to start attacking for a lot of damage very quickly. Right, exactly. So Mark's going to be put into a corner. And the way out, if, if your tendrils get stifled, is you have to go on an ill-gotten gains plan. And if Mark doesn't have 
an infernal tutor or another way to find the ill-gotten gains, then you know, you stifle the tendrils of agony. Uh, Storm trigger drains them for two life, which isn't going to be enough. And uh, you know, that stifle could go a long way. Draw drops another Tarmogoyf, quickly putting a clock on the Storm deck here. And uh, it's interesting, Gerard said earlier he loves being interactive in his games, and Mark's deck is about as uninteractive as he wants to get. Yeah. So we have interactive versus uninteractive. We'll see how this goes. Looks like Ponder and Lion's Eye Diamond for Mark here. Uh, looks at the ponder. Maybe great. Yeah, that stifle could potentially be huge for Gerard Fabiano. Uh, I mean, if uh, if played correctly. Now, obviously, Mark's got a duress in his hand. He could strip that stifle away, but even then, it still makes a target. All right, uh, ponder for Mark here. And uh, Mark chooses to shuffle with that ponder, going for a mystery card. crazy the wide breadth of decks we've seen in this format. We've seen aggressive decks like Goblins, yeah. we've seen these combo decks like Storm, we've seen, you know, these almost mid-rangey decks like Team America, and then some control decks like the Enlightened Tutor decks. There's just so many different things you can play, and the fact that they're all reasonable, viable decks is just unbelievable. Uh, Gerard uh, gives Mark one of his trademark toothpicks. <laughs> Classic G-Fabs. Alright, looks like uh, Mark... <laughs> Looks like Mark draws a, uh, a Lotus Petal there. And Mark passes back to Gerard. Those two Tarmogoyfs are going to be getting in for some damage this turn. Was that another Stifle Gerard do, Drew? I couldn't quite make it out. I think it may have been. No, it's Ponder. One mana blue spells. Yeah, Gerard can just, you know, drop a Tomb Stalker, leave a blue open, and say, okay, I'm going to kill you next turn. Kill, try to kill me this turn through a Stifle. That's your only shot. But, I mean, Mark Stack is certainly capable of doing that. If he had Nozums, he can find a Duress and... And, uh, man, those Tarmogoyfs are really hitting hard. Let's see, here comes a Tomb Stalker. Gerard uh, pitches his graveyard, which uh, does change, potentially change the size of that Tarmogoyf. I think he loses instant, at least. Um, I, has Mark played a Brainstorm yet? I don't think so either. I see a lot of nice. Pure Dains and Ponders. Oh, uh, okay. But uh, even then, that still threatens lethal. Yeah. So, I think Mark is, like, the guy's back against the wall. He thinks he, he has to go off now, but I don't think he has the tools to go off. All right, Duress. So it looks like he might just be fishing for uh, information here. Wait, is that a Tendrils in his hand? He might just have to go with small Tendrils and try and buy a turn, but I don't know what that's really going to accomplish. Ooh, and Gerard has a Sylvan Library. All right. And he throws oh, nice. a, two Chromoxes down, and that's game one. So Gerard Fabiano takes the first game against Mark Taco, or Toko. So going to their sideboards, let's see what a hate defense has for the storm decks. Consuming Vapors, Ghastly Demise, no. Smother, no. Frexine Revoker, no. Crocin Grip, probably not. I don't think that's going to do enough. You could theoretically grip a Lion's Eye Diamond, but I don't think that's really going to accomplish a lot. So, I mean, he definitely wants to dispel, right? Uh, yeah, so the dispel is taken for sure, and the spell pierce is bringing in for sure. Those are the two yeah. spells. Almost assuredly, if he has too many cards to take out, Relic of Progenitus could potentially uh, uh, come in just to cycle, but I don't really see that happening. Uh, Jordan has two go for the throats that are going to come out. Yeah, so those are definitely coming out, and those can be replaced by the Dispel and, and the Spell Pierce. Yep, and um, I think that might be the only change he wants to make. He, he might want to cut two explosives for two Cross and Grips. Yeah, the thing like Cross and Grip can hit an LED if his opponent, like for some reason, passes the one in play. Even it, it's like it can a non-issue, or when his opponent like has an LED in play and like has something else in the stack. So can explosives though, right? Just explosives for zero. Uh, yeah, but if you don't, if you don't have a split second, then uh, 
Oh, split second doesn't even stop. Yeah, it doesn't Lines. change anything. It's mana ability, right? Yeah. Yeah, and so that, it's actually, yeah. And that way you can... He's just better, I guess. Yeah, and that way you can kill a Chromox if Marcus, like, an early Chromox that's accelerating his draws. Uh, for, on uh, Mark's side, let's see. His sideboard is three Reverend Silence, three Xanted Swarm, two Chain of Vapor, two Echoing Truth, a Tropical Island so he can cast his green spells, and four Dark Confidant. I think he's going to bring the Confidant here to make sure his hand stays uh, prime. Probably the matchup he wants it for, right? Uh, I would imagine this is the matchup where he wants the Confidant. Okay, this is interesting. Now, so interesting Lion's Eye Diamond, uh, the way it's worded, it says activate this ability only any time you can cast an instant. Uh, so that means that you could not, not do it in response to a split second spell. Oh, wow. I, I remember there was a large discussion about this at one point, about this interaction. And I, and because of the way Lines of Diamond is worded, the small thing, I looked it up, and it does say you can activate this ability only any time you could cast an instant. You cannot cast an instant with a split-second spell on the stack. Yes. Uh, Double-check with a shot off of the sidelines. Uh, Lines of Diamond in split-second. Lines of Diamond reads... Okay, uh, l Okay. so you, you can use it in response. Even though it says activate this ability only any time you can cast an instant. That's okay? It's a weird wording, but it's the wording. It, it, I'm sure this has come up for a lot of you people out in Twitter land before. If you know the answer, just tweet it at us, and uh, we'd be happy to. I'm sure I could actually just Google this, but it's way more fun to make you guys do it for me. All right, so Gerard, uh, or sorry, not Gerard, uh, Rashad says that you cannot use Lion's Eye Diamond. I'm double checking. Uh, I did a quick so uh, Google search, and it looks as though you can use Lion's Eye Diamond in, in response. Uh, let's see, the important rule here is 702.5a. Split second is a stack ability that functions only while the spell split second is on the stack. And what's the important part here, split second means as long as the spell is on the stack, players can't cast other spells or activate abilities that aren't mana abilities. And so even though it's acting as though an instant, it's still a mana ability which can be played. Um, so, yes, you can activate Lion's Eye Diamonds in response. I remember there was a large discussion about this a while back. I think it came up in the top eight of a uh, Star City Open, actually. And so you can act in that in response. So yeah, you just I think uh, he just brings in those uh, or he keeps in the engineer explosives there. That seems reasonable. Yeah. So well, maybe uh, he even brings in the two revokers and just names lines by diamond. <laughs> but, right? Sure. Like that's not unreasonable. No, absolutely His not. There's no way to kill it. And that's actually really good. Yeah, and it's just a two one. Like, yeah, it's a beater. Like it's not like his opponent plays anything they can block. It's yeah. Just, like exactly. confidants. You want to trade your confidant? <laughs> yeah, I, I don't think so. I but think that's way better in the E, right? Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, for sure. So I think those revokers are a good call. Uh, we'll, see if, we'll see if a Gerard brings those in. Uh, Mark's almost certainly bringing in the four confidants. And then I'm unsure as if, to, if he's going to bring in any of his Xanted Swarms, Chain of Vapors, or Echoing Truths. Depends on what he expects. If he expects to have to worry about a lot of counter magic, Xanted Swarm might be the way to go. But if he's expecting you know, permanent disruption, it's possible Chain or Echoing Truth might be the way to go. He might mix it up a little bit. It's uh, unclear on exactly what's going to happen here. So Marco uh, lays out seven cards. And uh, the players uh, look over their initial hands. Gerard, uh, toothpick at the ready. Is, uh, looks like they, like they both keep. And uh, Mark is off to the races with what I can only assume is a fetch land. And he finds Tropical Island. Now, something interesting that Mark did in the last game, Mark had only played, really, uh, some discard spells. He would played a lot of ponders and, you know, preordains and discard spells, but he gave, he gave Gerard no idea that he was a storm deck and then on the last turn he just revealed the dark ritual and two pro mox yeah. Gerard. and well, he didn't have to do that well, and that tells Gerard I'm storm <laughs> well when I saw that I kind of got the picture that maybe Gerard already knew somehow 
I don't know if they if they players might know each other, but yeah, I was wondering the same thing. Like, okay, well maybe he could run a bluff here, but also the duress on the stifle kind of gave it away a little bit too. I feel. Yeah. Um. So I feel like, you know, if Gerard didn't know, maybe might Mark might have made a mistake. Well, stifle's the only thing he could have duress there, right? What did it? What was the other card he revealed? Sylvan Library, which is somewhat irrelevant. Yeah. I mean, if you're going to try to run the run a bluff, I think you take the library. But if Mark thinks that Jard already knows what's going on, also like Jard said earlier, he doesn't play a ton of legacy. So yeah, he might just not have been able to identify it was a storm deck where a more seasoned legacy player might have been able to. Um, but regardless, so it looks like Mark opted for the Xanthus Swarm plan here. And for those of you who don't know what Xanthus Swarm does, it's a one green for a zero one. It's from Scourge, and it's flying. And it says when it attacks, basically when it attacks, your opponent can't cast uh, spells for the rest of the turn. So it protects your combo, you can't be counterspelled, essentially silencing them uh, on every single opportunity. Now Gerard said earlier in the booth that he had grown wary of combo decks boarding out his removal against them because he felt like they would bring in, uh, most combo decks have a creature plan in the sideboard and Mark has at least Xantiforms and probably Dark Confidants here. So I'm wondering if Gerard actually left some of his go for the throats in, which might actually turn out to be relevant, interestingly enough. Yeah, I mean, he might do that. Gerard's the type of guy who likes to keep in some removal spells to fight, uh, to fight against combo decks. He's like, you know, everybody just brings in Confidant. He actually <laughs> said that to me earlier today. Yeah. He's like, I don't take it by removal ever. Uh, let's see. And uh, let's see. Mark uh, brainstorms. It's interesting, we saw all these Jace brainstorms on the first day, and today we're seeing a lot of the actual brainstorm. Yeah. So a lot of drawing three and putting two cards back. We've still seen a, uh, a fair amount of Jace brainstorming. It's uh, not just for the uh, newer formats. Jace brainstorming is good, even in vintage nowadays. What's going on? Oh, hey, oh. hey, we're back. Hey. hey, there's a judge call. All right. All right. Hey, all right. I'm Gerard Fabiano here with uh, with Mark Taco. Whoa, Mark Taco. <laughs> That's what I Seriously? am. Seriously? He's going to go back hey. and watch this. He's going to go back and watch this coverage. Oh. What? <laughs> uh, hey, Jake. How's it going? How are you? I'm doing, doing pretty well. Good to see you. Uh, so yeah, it looks like there's a judge call, so the camera's going to go on us for just a second here while they resolve whatever's going on. Yeah, um, I really like Mark's deck choice. I've always been a combo player, and uh, whenever, whenever I think about playing in Legacy tournaments, the deck I'm almost always thinking about playing mm -hmm. is Storm. And uh, I think it's a very strong deck. It's probably more powerful than anything else, and uh, it can win games that nothing else can. So. Yeah, I mean, it's difficult to pilot correctly, but if you can figure out and play it enough and goldfish it enough and play against other decks, which is the important part, a lot of people don't get past the goldfishing stage to the point where they have to learn how to deal with all the actual disruption and legacy. If you can get to that point, the deck is just extraordinarily powerful, and Mark's put up a great performance with it, with it today. He's found himself down a game against Gerard Fabiano, not the position he wanted to be in. Yeah, but it's pretty rough. I'm sure he's uh, found himself in harder positions before and managed to back out of them, so... As it's a deck, deck to watch. Uh, it'd be interesting to see a storm deck in the top eight. And okay, it looks like we're back to the All right. board here. Uh, judge call has been resolved. We're fighting. Swamp uh, searched out by polluted delta. And uh, we'll see what Mark has to do has to do here. I've always thought of Xanthus Swarm as an interesting sideboard choice. Uh, Ari Lax last week, uh, who made top eight with an ad nauseum deck, chose to not play Xanthid Swarm in anywhere in his 75. Uh, he opted, yeah, he opted for a uh, uh, actually a significantly different deck. He had Grim Tutors in the main deck, which yeah. to be fair are pretty expensive and hard to find. Uh, but he had a very different sideboard too. So uh, Mark's playing a slightly different list than Ari did. It's not too easy to find Grim Tutors. Yeah, there was a. Very small window of time to buy Grim Tutors, and when they were cheap after the announcement was made. But now, I mean, they are expensive, but they're very powerful for what they do. Uh, and a tutor like that is hard to come by. So Xanthus Swarm comes in. Gerard uh, looks over, look at that Xanthus Swarm, and Infernal Tutor for Mark Taka. 
Uh, Jared is like, what does this card do when you cast it normally? Or just maybe what does the card do in general? I don't know. But, all right, so he, he uh, shows him at the ball ritual. Reveals the ball ritual. And uh, for those who actually don't know what Infernal Tutor does when you actually have cards in your hand, you reveal a card from your hand and get a second copy of it. Yeah. So it helps fuel your combo, actually, by making sure you can double up on cards. So Mark got two, uh, got, got, has access to two Cabal Rituals now. I actually play Infernal Tutor in my uh, Legacy Pyromancer Ascension deck. Oh, there you go. So With that, in that deck, do you uh, use Metamorphose to combo? Or? Yeah, you have Metamorphose. Yeah, then you, you loop it infinite times with Regrowth. Is that the yeah. plan? Yep. All kinds of cool combo decks you can play in Legacy, all the way from High Tide to Storm to Pyromancer's Ascension, a deck which I know Jerry Thompson loves. Uh, yeah. And Mike Flores has shown love for it, you've shown love for it, and a lot of players love the uh, two mana red enchantment. Gerard uh, holding a Force of Will there, I believe. And uh, another blue card. Passes back. Thoughtseize for Mark here. Ooh, that Thoughtseize is going to be really good here. That's is going to be good, although, although the Xanthan Swarm is holding off that Force of Will from doing too much. I mean, just having the thought seize, though, it uh, just gives him the information he needs to right. like it, and know exactly how he needs to pilot his combo turn. <laughs> well, look at Gerard's head. Double Force Stifle. Uh, uh, Mark takes the Stifle. And oh, and it looks like he's going for it. Yep. So that's one spell this turn. He has three black mana in his mana pool. It's actually the ball three, ritual. Four spells, right? Oh, three spells. Oh, I didn't see the lotus petal coming out. Yeah, so four spells. Now. Four spells. Five spells. Five spells. Five spells. So that's three, four, five black mana. Does not have threshold for those cabal rituals. Or maybe he does. I can't quite see. I thought there was only a couple cards in his graveyard, but it's being obscured a little bit. Yeah, third for five. Yeah. Okay, so we just have to report that his graveyard is in fact full. So uh, those small versions are huge. And here comes Infernal Tutor. And there's no cards left in hand? No cards left. So you, uh, yeah, you get. Uh, Gerard can't force his. Right, Gerard can't force. Swarm he going. is uh, dealing with his Xanthid Swarm right now. So. It's uh, very likely, does he get ill-gotten gains here? Is that the play? Um, I think... I think right here he can basically just get an ad nauseum, right? If he has enough mana, he can just... Nope, he goes for ill-gotten oh, gains. For the, I think he... So I think he's just gonna... Yeah, I guess he can Iggy Pop now, basically. Yeah, I think he has lethal with the ill-gotten gains. So Gerard uh, picks up ill-gotten gains and looks at his graveyard. He's like, uh... All right, sure. Because with Ilgon against, he can get back Infernal Tutor too, right? Um, yeah. So he can, he goes Ilgon against, returns Cabal Ritual, Cabal Ritual, Infernal Tutor. Okay. So, uh, or I guess he gets a Dark Ritual here. Oh, so Cabal Rituals must not be. So, uh, for those who don't know what uh, Ill-Gotten Games does, it's black, black, two, and you, every, each player picks, discards their hand, and then returns three cards from their graveyard to their hand, and you exile uh, Ill-Gotten Games. So basically, you know, it lets Mark reuse the cards that's in his graveyard, get extra storm on top of everything else, and all under the Xanthus Swarm Jarred can't do anything. I mean, Ilgon Gains is one of those cards that he'll have been expecting to be powerful for a long time, and it didn't really get there right. until uh, Legacy took hold as a format. Right, there was the Iggy Pop deck for a long time, and the Iggy Pop deck slowly evolved into the Ad Nauseums. I mean, yeah. the, the cool thing about, uh, I think the reason why I probably went for uh, Ilgon Gains here is just because, like, Ad Nauseum, there's a very good chance he's going to win, but you never know what's going to happen with Ad Nauseum, where I think he's got a, I haven't done the math exactly, but I'm pretty sure he's got a confirmed kill with the uh, ill-gotten gains. I sure think he could probably build up to 9 Storm easily this turn. Yeah, the Dark Ritual, Cabal Ritual, Infernal Tutor, Tendrils of Agony. That should be more than enough. He only needs 9 Storm, right? Yep, only 9 Storm because Gerard is sitting at 18 life. And here comes Infernal Tutor. And, uh, is going to mean tendrils of agony. Yeah, that's it. 
Yep, as long as he did not sideboard it out. Yep, <laughs> and there he goes, Tendrils of Agony. Uh, the Shrug's double checking. Are you sure I can't cast any spells? Yep, you can't cast any spells, and uh, yeah, it's, it's interesting. Like, if you've never seen the cards in Storm, or you know, you're just not that familiar with them, even the, how they all work together is very strange. Uh, as is most combo decks. Same with Dredge, right? You play against Dredge for the first time, and you're like, I don't understand. Like, stink weed imp, but uh, he's playing something good. Yeah, but uh, <laughs> Dented Swarm is a pretty, uh, pretty nice little piece there. Mark Toko was correct to bring that one in. Oh man. Yeah, I'm. Uh... I'm surprised to see just how strong that is against Gerard's deck. Yeah, I, I mean, feel like Gerard kind of drew a hand where that was yeah. just what he needed. Where know? on the flip side, there are playing pants where Gerard could draw words that wouldn't be quite as good. Yeah, Gerard could, you know, draw hymns instead of, uh, you know, just these cards, these blue cards that are so weak against the Xantin Swarm. Absolutely. Yeah, I mean, we'll see what happens in the third game. I think if uh, Gerard took out some of his creature removal, it'll be back in. Can we go ahead? Yeah, so... I feel like one of the best parts about Mark's deck here is that Mark's deck has a nut draw that cannot be beaten by anybody. Uh, he can kill people on turn one. He can do it through hate. He can do it through force of wills. Um, basically, one of the scariest parts about playing against Storm is that the deck is so powerful that you could just lose at any moment. And it's... You know, it's kind of a harrowing experience. Because Gerard's sitting there shuffling up for this game, but, you know, he's afraid of, you know, playing a Ponder on turn one and passing into somebody who just kills him. And having your opponent in that spot is a pretty big advantage. It definitely makes people play a little bit worse. I've found that when I've play, played offbeat combo decks, people uh, are often a bit shaken when they're playing against me. They're worried about me uh, just having the uh, combo very early. And it often makes them play too cautiously and gives me time to actually assemble what I need to. So for the, uh, what is it, uh, for the dra draft challenge right now, the uh, semi-final match is a match between two Pro Tour champions, Chris Lockman and uh, John Finkel. It's uh, pretty exciting. If uh, this match ends, we're going to try to put that on camera for you guys. It's a really exciting thing for me, for uh, Chris Lockman to be doing this well in the draft challenge. I've always thought of him as you know, one of the best limited players around. And uh, you know, he won a Pro Tour sitting next to me. He is... Uh, in my opinion, one of the best Magic players there ever has been. So, <laughs> it's good to see him doing so well. So he's going to have to, you know, he's have to be a big game hunter today. I feel like he can do it, though. It's just a John Finkel. There have been scarier things in the past. <laughs> Alright, now this is game three, and this is a match for top eight, so this is pretty tense for both of these guys right now. Charge Chips is opening back. Looks like Mark's probably going to keep this hand. I'm not 100% sure, though. Now, Gerard may wisely be uh, just mulliganing into some aggression or uh, mulliganing into some disruption. In game one, he got kind of lucky. Mark just had one of those hands that doesn't really do anything. And you know, that's one of the dangers of playing a deck like Storm is that if you're not willing to mulligan aggressively, sometimes you're just going to get these draws where your deck doesn't really function. The storm deck on the draw can do some very, very scary things. The 
to see how Gerard leads off this game. Now the Stifles, while well, they may seem good in this match, if Mark actually wants to go off and Gerard has any number of real cards in his hand, Mark can easily just add nauseam into, you know, some extra copies of discard spells and just duress the cards out of Gerard's hand. Gerard, interestingly enough, gets a uh, tropical island here. Uh, it's not necessarily the land you'd want to see on turn one because, you know, turn two him is such a powerful play in this matchup. But, uh, you know, he could have a turn two Sylvan Library or something like that and be wanting to uh, have Stifle Mana up right now. I wouldn't be surprised to see his opponent crack this land here. But, uh, yeah, looks like... Uh He's got that Dark Confidant, which is going to do a lot of work for him. Yeah, he's probably going to want to play Lotus, and uh, now I'm going to be surprised if Gerard doesn't uh, stifle here. Yeah, Gerard stifles, and uh, that's rough. <laughs> yeah. Stifles a good effect, not only just uh, you know stopping the storm mechanic, but just destroying Mark's land. Interestingly enough, Gerard is actually missing his second land as well. Stifle is a very versatile card. Uh, Jamie Johnson points out on Twitter that uh, you can actually stifle Danton Storm's trigger. Yes, that's true. So, uh, so in the last game, Gerard had opportunity to, to stifle the Danton Storm trigger and opted not to, and then Mark went off. So it's, it's good for keep that in mind. I wonder if he realizes that for this game. Well, uh, had he done that, then uh, when he was duressed, the uh, other blue card would have been taken, and right. he would not have been able to force anyway. Right, right. So it wouldn't have made a difference, but you're right, he should have stifled that effect. Yeah. Well, I mean, just in, it's just good to keep in mind for this matchup in general, it could be very important. All right, so Mark uh, spends a Lotus Petal to Thought Seize Gerard, and Spell Pierce, the, was that, that's the one Spell Pierce in the sideboard? Yeah. Yeah, the one Spell Pierce for Gerard comes down. Nice, and Mark's down to very few cards here. Yeah, uh, Gerard moves over to the check. It looks like four cards for Mark. Gerard's thinking to himself, hey, I mean, it doesn't seem too bad when you're both on three cards. Mark's deck needs uh, a lot of gas to cook, so. Yeah, exactly. So it looks like a dress here for Mark, so. He's not going to be uh, free from that uh, hand disruption after all. Stifle's getting taken. It's the only yeah. available option. The other two so are Goy two Tomb Stalkers and Tomb Blade. Stalkers. Yeah. Tomb Stalkers look very poor right now. I believe Gerard drew into at least one of them. Yeah. Let's see what he drew into now. Five, ten, six. Uh, so Mark uh, trying to Give the line of play. It looks like uh, Gerard drew up Drew Land, so we'll get one of the two black sources he needs for his Tomb Stalkers and uh, drop down a Tarmogoyf. And I mean, Tarmogoyf's a beater. We saw it in uh, the first game. You know, if if Mark can't put together a combo, Gerard's just going to kill him with Tarmogoyf, and it's only going to yeah. take a couple of turns. Well, so. and, and one more land, and Gerard could potentially just cast a Tomb Stalker, and that'll really add to the clock. Uh, Mark, of course. I mean, he obviously has a lot of experience with this deck, I think, to have gone so far into the tournament with it. And he's just trying to figure out when is the correct time to go off. He can go off with as little as one land. I'm looking at his hand right now. I think he's ready. Uh, he's got, oh, uh, his hand is looking pretty primed to go off. Yeah. But I think he might be m missing a ritual effect. I believe that's uh, I mean, two he, LEDs and a, and a DR, right? Like. And, and he has... Infernal Tutor ready to go too. So yeah, he can go yeah, he Dark can. Ritual, Lands I Diamond, Lands I mm -hmm. Diamond, respond to the di to the or Infernal Tutor respond, crack both diamonds. Yep, and he's going for it. So we're gonna see what happens. Yeah. Storm count one. Gerard has force in his hand, but I think he doesn't. He doesn't have a, a blue card to accommodate it. So it's not gonna do a lot for him. All right, Mark opts to. Uh, Dark Ritual, so spell number two, and Mark has three black in his mana pool. Looks over, counts Mark's hand. 
from where he has three black. Plays that, so that's three spells and three black and marks mana pool. This is looking pretty scary. Yeah, and that Infernal Tutor is... Yep. There's Infernal this Tutor. This is just terrifying one. Response, when... use both those. Now, the Ill-Gotten Gains will be in Mark's graveyard, so we cannot go for the Ill-Gotten Gains route at all during this game. Yeah, I mean, he's just going to add Nauseam here, though. He, he has enough life where he can just use that right. as a resource yeah, and yeah, just yeah. win the game. He can add Nauseam. Just if it turns out that he needs uh, to Infernal Tutor for Ill-Gotten Gains or something, uh, it's not going to work, but... It should be seven mana left. should be able to just Infernal Tutor for Tendrils. Yeah, so he's he has... Gonna, uh, Seven mana spend over. five on this ad nauseum right here. And Let's leave with, him with, with two black mana. Yeah, with 18 minute life to play with, it seems like pretty good odds for Mark here. Yeah. And now he's and he knows that uh, Gerard doesn't have a way to counter. He does have the force in his hand, but it's not doesn't do anything else without out another blue card. Those tomb stalkers not changing color anytime soon. Sure, Gerard uh, is like uh. <laughs> he rubs his hand together. Always the, the uh, oh man, Gerard. Go shuffle in the deck. He's like, all right, all, all expensive ones right here at the top. That's what Gerard's hoping for. He needs his opponent to flip into. Uh, oh man, he already you know discarded a lot of the expensive spells. It's yeah, I mean, kind of bad there, for Gerard at this a, point. There's another ad nauseum, I suppose. That's about it. All right, so uh, here we go. Dark Confound for two. That's doesn't, a pretty good one to flip. Doesn't help that much. Crystal Vein, Duress, Tropical Island, Brainstorm, Dark Confidant, not a lot of fast mana here, Fluted Delta, Cabal Ritual, that's what Mark was looking that's for. That's what he needs. Fluted Delta, Ponder, takes one. Tendrils, now Mark is down to five. At this point, any flip could directly kill him from the second ad nauseum. So yeah. now, like, with Ad Nauseam when you cast it, you can generally just be like, ah, oh, flip, 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 flip. But then as soon as you're at five, you have to start thinking, all right, do I still have to continue here? Because there's just that chance you could lose. But he keeps going. Land, land. Land. Ad Nauseam. Brainstorm. Oh. Now he's down to four, but I think he's got rid of all his four casting cards in his yeah, deck. Yeah, no fours left, so. All right, Ponder, now he's three. on three. He's looking for a ritual, I think. He needs one. <laughs> takes, takes the island and now pauses to think. Uh, what's it going to be? He thinks about it. <laughs> uh, down to two. <laughs> Did Gerard shuffle exactly the way Mark wanted him to? Oh, or, my or goodness. Did... This, is, uh, this is tight. <laughs> oh, man. Or did, uh, so did um, Gerard shuffle the way, the way he wanted it to? Or did Mark... Uh, or is Mark going to play himself out of this one? Two life left to play with. What's on top of the deck? He's working through the math. Oh, he's going to be an Infernal him? Tutor there. I feel it. He's counting up the storm count to see... Uh, Maybe Cabal Ritual? So he really just needs like a DR on the top of his deck or an LED, right? Like, LED's not even good enough. No, LED isn't good enough because he doesn't want to discard his hand here. He needs Chromox really badly. Yeah, that would be the perfect card. That's what he needs like viciously. Yeah. Two life. Oh man. Is he gonna go for it? He's doing the math. He's trying to figure it out. Can I come on? Just flip an infernal tutor and die. Do it. <laughs> we're, do and it. we're not do it. you're it's not biased here, right now. Oh there it no! is the chrome box. That's exactly what he was looking for. Oh man, that's a little biased. I apologize. I love me. <laughs> Alright. Oh there's Chromox. Oh man. I feel like I... somebody just hit me. Alright, and that Chromox <laughs> is pretty good for Mark here. I don't think he can afford to flip anymore. I think he just has to take that. He, obviously, yeah, I haven't you can't really get here. much better than that, but I, uh, mean, I don't know if it's good enough. So he, he played two Lion's Eye Diamonds. Yeah, he just keeps them. So his Storm Count is currently, is it five right now? Let's see, Infernal Tutor, Ad Nauseum, two Lion's Eye Diamonds, and a Dark Ritual, correct? So yeah, yeah Storm Count is currently five. And I think he can get to nine pretty easily. He can go Chromox, imprint a blue card, play a blue card, Cabal Ritual, and then I think Dark Confidant, uh, Tendrils of Agony. So he plays a land. He's 
Make sure he's doing the math correctly. He does not want to mess this up. Alright, so he moves all the lands out of the way. He's like, these aren't doing anything for me. Gerard, huh. a man who said he wanted to be as interactive as possible. Mark, a deck that wants to be as least as interactive as possible. Okay, so here comes Crow Mox. Actually, Mark's version is actually pretty interactive. You know, he's not silencing his opponent, and <laughs> he's actually like thought seizing and harassing them. Yeah, it's totally true. Uh, so he puts Ponder under Crow Mox. And then he has Xanted Swarms and Confidants. He's definitely interacting. So Crow Mox is spell number six. Seven, eight. Yeah, he has it, I think, if he goes Brainstorm, Cabal Ritual. Hey, he can't Cabal Ritual. Doesn't he have two mana floating still? Uh, For, no, because he, he has to add Nazar with two mana floating, right? He's black. He, he, went, he had one land, went Dark Ritual to three, uh, played Infernal Tutor, went down to one, and then cracked two LEDs to go up to uh, seven, and then played Ad Nauseam with two mana floating. Okay. So, yeah, there he goes. Cabal Ritual. Yeah, Cabal Ritual, and I think that should be it. Yeah. Um, Mark is finishing up the math. He brainstorms to add another car, uh, spell to the storm count. Draws three, another Chromox on Infernal Tutor. Brainstorm's going to put two lands back on top. Those aren't doing him any good. And uh, probably, I mean, he can make some more storm, but yeah, I don't think it's necessary. I think that's nine. Yeah, I believe that's nine. Gerard peaked one last time. The Tomb Stalkers. And uh, the pair of Tomb Stalkers. A pair of fives, as it were. Not doing a lot. And Gerard picks up his cards. Oh, that's a shame. Mark, I think Gerard really wanted to do well. You know, it was the uh, first event in New Jersey. This is great news for Mark Toko, though. Yeah. This is really cool. This is, uh, all right, I'm going to. I like to, seeing Ad Nauseam decks. Yeah, so we have at least one Ad Nauseam deck in the top eight. It's unclear.